Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Palcast. I'm John Hale. And I'm John Gallimore. Thank you for tuning in to hear us talk about all things comic book, nerd, movie, and anything else you might just happen to throw in there because it made us mad. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, what's been going on, John? John, I'm frustrated. Why are you frustrated, buddy? I'm frustrated because I went to an antique shop just the other day, and when I went in there, you know, you never know what you're going to find in an antique shop. Sometimes it can be a total bust. Sometimes it can be, uh, you know, a gold mine. And this one actually was going to, and I say going to, be a gold mine because really? apparently when I stepped inside this antique shop, the people that running it that were running it had the same business practices that they did when these antiques were still brand new. Um, oh. I've stumbled upon some long boxes, and I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to flip through and just see what might catch my eye. And I find a copy of Iron Man number 282. So if those oh. of you who don't know, Iron Man 282 is the first appearance of War Machine. Oh, and dude, that's awesome. Yeah, no, so I got incredibly excited, right? Like, oh, sweet, good grab. Check the price. They only wanted three bucks for it. I'm like, oh, yes, definitely. I mean, like, it's one of those comic book finders kind of dreams because you you always hear these stories about these people who go to yard sales and they find this great collection and all this. And I was getting that kind of on a smaller scale, but I was still getting that. So, you know, picking up uh, a first appearance of the War Machine was going to be a cool find. I snagged the book, and I'm like, I go up front, I'm all ready to go. I'm like, let me get out of here really quickly. And there's a sign that says, we do not take credit or debit cards. No. Yeah, dude, no credit or debit cards. I could not believe it. I I, I read it, and I was like, um, are, are you guys serious? You, you actually don't take credit or debit cards? And the woman behind the counter was like, yeah, well, I reckon he's going to try to get that fixed sometime soon, but I don't know how much longer it's going to be. Oh, dude, that's so heartbreaking. Yeah, well, and, and then here's the thing. I, you know, I talk about that like such a first world problem, right? You know, like, oh, my gosh, they didn't take credit. But, you know, now I, I, I haven't had a chance to get back there due to work and things of this nature. So the, I, I tried to... <laughs> Uh, in true John Gallimore fashion, it's like when I was a kid and I would go to a department store, I would try to hide toys if it was the last one they had. Like, I remember I found a uh, a Wolverine action figure at a at a Kmart. No, I take it back. It was at a Hills. A Wolverine oh, figure geez. at... Yeah, man. That That's how far this takes you back. I w- found a Wolverine figure at a Hills and I begged my mom to buy it for me and she wouldn't. And so I... Mm. I very, very creatively hit it behind um, some GI Joes that were not as popular to me at this point. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm thinking, no one's gonna look behind the GI Joes to find the Wolverine action figure. I've, <laughs> I've got this master plan. Right. So, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I put the, uh, the Iron Man 282 behind some other piece of uh, actually comic book memorabilia they had there that was I wasn't familiar with and hope that no one else is familiar with, so they'll go to pick it up. So with any luck, with any luck, I'll be able to have that uh, within the next few days, next time I get a chance to run by there. But I, I just I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. Oh, no, epilogue, epilogue. So I, I come back through there today, right? I come back through there today because the sign says that they're open until 7 o'clock. So I was like, okay, you know, I, I had some things to do for work today. I'm going to get back to get back to Morristown really quickly, and I'm going to hit up this place. I put $4 in my pocket. $4. Plenty to cover this, okay? Sign says 7. Got there at 6.30. They were closed. So I'm like, what, 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 what is this? You know, so this oh, business God, fails dude. in the biggest way possible. And like I said, I know I'm talking first world problems, but we're talking comic books. And if you're not here to hear about this, well, then, you know, there's the door and such. <laughs> so Damn, so man, that's that why sucks. I'm mad. That's why I'm mad. And that's what you're going to have to deal with. That's the kind of that's the kind of mood I'm in right now. Oh, geez. Well, that is. Oh. That sucks, man. Well, you know what the kind of mood I'm in is that, first off, my cat is playing a nice little game of pull John's audio cables around, which is always <laughs> fun to play. Nice. Come on. Move. 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 And for those of you who haven't heard about the way that our setup works, you'll understand 
that we have no shortage of audio cables hanging around us. As we are podcasting from about seven hours away from each other, there are various cables and cords and headphones and adapters and everything involved bringing you the magic of this podcast today. I mean, to be completely honest, we probably have uh, better luck having stringing two soup cans and a piece of twine together and throwing oh. it <laughs> across state lines. <laughs> yeah, at this point, we might as well. Um, dude, uh, you, you know, we just hung out together um, this past weekend. We attended the uh, Full Moon uh, Tattoo and uh, horror, uh, horror Convention. And you know, dude, uh, you are a dangerous man to hang around because <laughs> ever since because ever since that we've hung out together, I've been going on eBay's and I've been looking up first issues of certain comics. And I told you about one of them today. It was uh, Godzilla, King of Monsters uh, from Marvel Comics, nineteen seventy three, issue number one, a nine point six rating on the uh, comic scale, which is mm. great, right? I mean, mm. I mean, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know much about it. And so, you know, I sat there and I struggle with decisions uh, in life, and uh, one of them was. Should I drop this amount of money and start collecting first issues of Godzilla books? Because, you know, it's two things I like. That's comic books and Godzilla. And Godzilla was released uh, a few times through four or five different publishers. Mm -hmm. Um, The first one was Marvel, uh, I think, to my knowledge. The second one is uh, Dark Horse Comics. Um, They released a Godzilla series and released, like, a special edition series. So he has, like, a bunch of, like, standalone series. And the newest one I've been following up with, which I do have the number one of, that's uh, Godzilla, uh, released by IDW uh, Publishing. And I have the number one. I must say, you, I sent you a uh, picture of that. It's uh, bagged and boarded, uh, that mm-hmm. one. And it's number one, still fresh. And, I mean, it's probably not worth much. I mean, but I did get it like a few years ago. But, yeah, that's just been in my head, back and forth, thinking if I should do it. So, yeah. John, I'm going to make this... I'm going to make this extremely easy for you. Not only should you do it, you should buy the 9.6, but then you need to find an ungraded copy that's not as in good in condition for a reader. So <laughs> not only right. should you should you start collecting these first appearances of Godzilla, but you should begin to collect reader copies just to go along with them. Just, oh, no, just on my coffee table, that's my Godzilla number one. Oh, yeah, that's there. <laughs> there, there, there. There is an issue of Godzilla where... Um, I remember this this storyline because there's an issue since Godzilla was uh, published by Marvel. Um, Godzilla was uh fighting the Avengers in one issue, and I've been looking for that one. But another one I've been looking for was um one where somehow Godzilla has gotten shrunken, and he's human size, and there is a mm-hmm. badass cover of Godzilla going toe to toe in hand to hand combat with uh Dum Dum Duggan. From Shield, no way! I swear to God, dude, uh, it's like him, Dum Dum Duggan, on like uh, some kind of uh, harbor dock, and the front issue is Godzilla uh, fighting him hand to hand, and like Dum Dum is like holding him off, like both hands, and like Godzilla's like roaring over top of him. It's intense, dude. I'm trying dude. to see that. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, you know what? It's def- I bet John would like this. Uh, <laughs> but <Duh>. um, <laughs> but yeah, man, that's. <laughs> This stuff has been going on here in uh, in uh, my life. Um, oh, also something I want to talk about really quick. Um, we all like like Batman here, right, John? We like Batman. Ye- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, there is a book that I ran across, um, and it's called. I think it's called. Uh, something terrible, and it's by this artist named Dean Dean Trippy, T R I P P E, and I mean I might be butchering his last name, but I came across the story because it was on the new episode of um, Fat Man on Batman, and dude, um, I have never read such a short story that was so powerful um, ever in my life. It's about this hmm. young kid who is uh, Dean Trippy himself. He talks about a so a sexual assault that he experienced when he was a kid, and pretty much he kept that bottled up uh, inside of him all of his life until he was actually able to write it down. And he drew a comic book, and in this comic book, he's always you know he's always been a big fan of Batman ever since he was a kid, 
And in the comic book, it shows where uh, Batman, like, saves him. And it's one of the most powerful books that I've ever seen in my life, man. Wow. And it's just, I mean, there's a page in there where he's an adult and he has a, he has a, a son of his own. And he's trying to draw out on a comic book panel. And throughout the entire thing, I mean, I'm, I'm going to try not to spoil it, but the experience has him chained to where he won't talk about it at all. Like there's an imaginary gun to his head. And no matter what he does in life, there's an imaginary gun always pointing at him to where he can't talk about it. Wow. Until one day he draws, uh, you know, he, I guess, visualizes Batman coming to him. And Batman pretty much says that, you know, superheroes help people. And he told him they wasn't a bad person. And then that moment, the gun that was put to his head was taken away. And all that pain that he experienced when he was a kid was finally let go. And he wrote this down in a comic book. And uh, you can look it up online. It's called Something Terrible. And it's available for 99 cents. Uh, I bought it. And I would uh, definitely encourage any of our listeners to go out there and check it out, dude. It was... It is absolutely powerful, man. I mean, I'm, I'm getting a little choked up just talking about it now. But oh, no, my goodness! I, I, I can only imagine, you know. And yeah, it brings me to something that I hadn't really necessarily planned on bringing up in this episode. But you know, for anybody that that kind of appeals to, you should really check out a documentary that just um, came out called Legends of the Night. A uh, gentleman by the main name of Brett Culp um, filmed this documentary, and it has to deal with Batman. Not just like comic book Batman, but what Batman does for us, you know, as a people, as a culture, you know, how Batman has helped people in different points in their life, how Batman's helped people find strength when they're battling cancer, um, deal with birth defects, deal with various things in their life uh, that they've had to deal with. It's incredibly powerful stuff. You can actually uh, check that out. I don't, I don't mind plugging this. I'll plug this all day long. You can check that out at wearebatman.com. Um, or just search for Legends of the Night, and that is with a K, uh, on Facebook. It's it's really great stuff. Um, if you have an interest in that at all, you know you would please check it out. Uh, Brett Culp's phenomenal guy. You know, it's totally not for profit stuff that he's doing. Um, he's already looking at taking a lot of the proceeds from this and investing it in other not for profit organizations. Uh, he's a phenomenal cat. He was on. Um, he actually was on Fat Man with Batman. On Batman with uh, Kevin Smith, um, just class act, super super good dude. Um, but if anything like that, you know, you find inspiring, or if you just like documentaries and you like comic books, or you like Batman, please, yeah, wearebatman.com. I can I can get behind uh, throwing that plug all day long. Right, that's awesome, man. And uh, and just re- really quick, going back to uh, to uh, something terrible. If you want to check out the, uh, he has a, a page that has a quick preview, and at the bottom you can purchase a comic book for ninety nine cents. It is www.10centticker.com slash something terrible. That's www.tncentticker.com slash something terrible. Um, definitely check it out, guys. It's a really, really great comic. And he, and he uh, inked and drew everything himself in the comic. Yeah, so, um, wow, didn't necessarily plan on taking this tone, uh, this more sad, (laughs) somber tone, this early in the podcast. No, it's totally cool, but um, yeah, yeah, switching gears completely, uh, full moon tattoo and horror convention. Oh my goodness, Nashville, it it was such a great time. Um, Yes, it was. John and I went down, our great friend Rob Schumacher, if you follow Chat 2, um, you know, the, the guys we're hosting off of, uh, you've heard of Rob Schumacher before, Rob's an incredible cat, Rob went down with us to support, we went down uh, to meet up with uh, Chris Toller from Chat 2, you can, just in case you don't know, you can find Chris's work uh, at Chris Toller 1911 on Twitter, or you can follow Chat 2 at Chat 2, um, and they're, you know, just you couldn't ask for two better dudes. You know, uh, as soon as we get down there to get, you know, for me to get uh, some work done uh, and enjoy this festival, they immediately start asking us, you know, have you paid for passes? Because we have guest pass for you. Have you paid for parking? We can get you hooked up on parking. Just immediately taking such a concern. So that was so appreciative, dude. Like they really came to, you know, make sure to hook us up on that. Yeah, man, that's, um, they, 
you, you know, uh, it's always good to have two good friends, you know, that are uh, with you when it comes to, uh, you know, when it comes to those events. Um, when we got there, um, Chris and Zach were talking about how we're going to lose our minds because there's so much stuff there. And I'll be honest, you know, when uh, we were talking about a tattoo and horror uh, convention, I was like, okay, you know, I like tattoos. I like horror movies, but I guess what is there going to be there? Uh, there was a plethora of uh, geek stuff there uh, for all of us to enjoy. Um, John even picked up, a, picked up a few books, actually. I did. Um, I picked up Batman number two thirty four, uh, which for if you you know if you don't follow, if you're just getting into this, that is the first Silver Age appearance of Two Face. Uh, Two Face made his first appearance at Detective Comics number sixty six, so it was the first time he had been seen um, for the better part of, of nearly like a decade and a half or something along those lines. This is nineteen seventy one um, when this book came out. Uh, it was penciled by uh, Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill wrote the story. So, I mean, once again, you have this perfect storm. You know, Two-Face coming back, Denny, o Denny uh, O'Neill and Neil Adams coming together to put the book together. It's it's phenomenal. It's, I couldn't believe I found it there. It got a really good price. The The vendors that were set up, they were super cool. Um, you know, it was amazing. And I don't know if I told you this, John, but that was my first convention experience. Really? Like ever? Any kind of convention, uh, tattoos, comic books, any kind of convention. So, uh, yeah, it was my first experience altogether. Nice. And, and you know, we, um, I say I, I've been to a, a convention before uh, myself, but that one was really cool. It was really set up together. There was a lot of cool stars there. Uh, Herschel from The Walking Dead was there. Herschel, yep. Um, Ken Forhey was there. He was from the original uh, Dawn of the Dead, uh, but I don't think he was there the day that we were. I think he came in Friday, didn't he? I believe so. I think. Um, Kane Hodder was supposed to be there, but he was uh, he was caught in um, he was caught in Australia. But um, Jim Duvall or James Duvall, you know, that's his government name, uh, <laughs> was there, and he played Frank the Rabbit on uh, on Donnie Darko, which. I got a funny story uh, about that. Um, Rob and I uh, were walking around the the convention center, and we we're just you know walk around in general because we know that uh, you know John was there getting a tattoo, and uh, Zach's there running his PR game. So he was sitting there, you know, doing that, and we're like, okay, well, you know, we're gonna just make sure we stay out of their way. So we just walk around a little bit. We went to a we went to a, a e vape store, which I came very very close to getting my first vape. But I decided against it because I want to save some money for uh, for another purchase I might get there in the summer. We walked to a bar, we grabbed some beers, and we came back. Um, and on the elevator, uh, <laughs> Jimmy Duvall got on the elevator with us, and Rob and I are talking. And I was like, you know, kind of sh shoot my eyes over, be like, Rob, Rob, look, 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 look. And Rob was like still talking to me, and I'm trying to like get his attention. And then we walked out, and I said, like, Dude, do you know who that was? And he's like. He's like, yeah, I saw you were like looking at that guy, man. What, what's your deal? And I was like, that's, that's, that's Jimmy Duvall. It's guy Frank Rabbit. And he's like, oh, no shit, really? And I was like, yeah. So um, as we stopped to talk about that, Jimmy came right up uh, behind him. And he kind of stopped, and I like kind of locked eyes with him. So he kind of like locked eyes with us. So it was like, uh, uh, uh like a deer in a headlight. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, Rob sat there, and Rob, classic Rob. Uh, he was like, "Hey, I'm sorry, but um, you're the guy who played Frank the Rabbit. You're um, uh, and he blanks on his name, and I'm not gonna throw Rob under the bus here because I blanked on his name too at the moment. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then he said, "Yeah, man, you know my name is Jimmy." And he's like, "Oh, dude, Jimmy." And he's like, "Yeah." And we shook hands, and he was such a really cool guy. Uh, Rob asked him some asking, uh, some not some asking. He uh, asked him some uh, acting questions. And he was nice enough to take time out of, I guess, the convention school and just sit there and talk to Rob about, like, what it takes to be an actor, what it takes to be this and that. And uh, we told him we were going to come by his booth. And I looked at Rob, and I was like, dude, I'm, well, I mean, we have to. We have to go by his booth and, like, you know, try to try help him out, you know, get, like, some kind of sign something or whatever. And, um, you know, we, we were thinking about doing that with a few other guys. But uh, Herschel's booth, Herschel's booth was, like, 40 bucks for, like, a signed autograph and a picture. And yeah, and the Jimmy line was, was ridiculous. There was no yeah. way I was going to stand in that line. No, not at all, dude. It was like out the door and like around the corner and all kinds of stuff. But, uh, 
you know, and like Rob and I talked about that. I was like, you know, you know, uh, uh, Jimmy Duvall wanted like twenty bucks, and I can do I can do twenty bucks for that, you know. But you know, again, you know, Herschel is a well-respected actor. I guess he was on Walking Dead, you know, spoilers. And um, so I was like, ah, forty bucks is just a little little steep. So we went, got some uh, cash, uh, and I got a I got him to sign a um, a uh, autograph picture. Uh, well, he signed his autograph to a picture that I bought. It was a frame from a movie he's in called Sushi Girl with uh, Tony Todd and Mark Hamill, and it's a bank heist movie. Um, pretty much, that's the best way to describe the genre. And uh, he signed it and took a picture. And I told him that you know I was an, an aspiring filmmaker, and I told him I said, dude, you know I feel like I feel like I'm getting into this late. You know, because there's like a lot of dudes who are either my age or younger who've produced like eight, nine, ten films at this point. And I just feel that, you know, I'm getting a late start. You got any advice? And he looked at me, and I don't know if he's directing anything. I mean, he probably has. But he said, dude, it's never too late. You know, um, just go out and do it. You know, just like I told your friend Rob, acting, you know, it's an exercise. As long as you keep doing it and keep getting involved, you're going to get better at it no matter what. And he said, now, now, now keep in mind, your first script might be bad, and the movie might be bad, but that's okay. You learn from your experience, and you just keep going. You keep going, you get that, you, you sharpen your mind, you sharpen your senses. And he told me the story about some guy who was in his filmmaker class, and he's the only one to produce a movie, and he was the oldest one there, you know, uh, till this day. And I was like, you know, that's just really awesome. I mean, the fact that he took time out of his day to talk to like two just normal guys. Now, you know, you know, maybe he did that with other people, but I thought it was really cool of him, you know, and that was a really great experience I had from that convention. No, and, and from everybody that I spoke to and everybody that I talked to, that was pretty much the f- feel I got from most of the big names that were there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I understand that you're going to go to these conventions, and it's not necessarily always going to be sunshine and puppy dogs when it comes to the cool people that you build up in your mind, and then you meet, and they're totally dicks, and then you're you're completely let down. But, right. um, you know, just, just like Chris, you know, our friend Chris that was tattooing down there, uh, he is, his booth was positioned directly beside Bob Terrell, you know, one of the biggest yeah. names in tattooing. Bob, mm-hmm. you know, conversed with Chris numerous times, wanted to check out the work he was doing. It was just such a cool dude. Um, it, it, was, it was incredible. And I, I must say, you know, to be my first convention experience, like, I, I'm really into it. You know, I, I'm fairly, uh, I guess, extroverted with my friends, but I feel so – I feel – get this really weird social anxiety when I'm around large groups of people, like really big groups of people that, um, you know, I don't necessarily always feel comfortable in those situations, but yeah, I had a phenomenal time. And, you know, like John said, you know, there were, there was comic book stuff there. There was horror stuff. There was tattoo stuff. It was, it was excellent, you know, and then, you know, and then coming out of the piece, uh, coming out of that convention with, the best tattoo on my body, you know, by one oh, of my yeah, best dude, friends. That was that was really cool. The uh, the uh, tattoo you got. Tell them what you got. Yeah, I, so you know, I'm a big fan of the Romero Dead films, as is every other you know geek fanboy in the world. But you know, I got a very i the very iconic zombie bub tattooed on my left calf, and uh, it the piece is phenomenal. You know, definitely have pics to come. Uh, but you know, Chris Toller drilled on me for a good six and a half hours uh yeah well, and, I, I, I was about to say you were you were under the under the drill for a long time but you know uh when i went to uh dc uh with them um they were on rob for about that amount of time too but rob didn't have any any any, any color now i don't know if that makes a difference in pain tolerance or whatnot but uh i mean dude you sat there and you took it like a champ you know, well, well, I know this, uh, uh, you know, our good friend, uh, you know, Billy Fraley, who I hope is listening to this, you know, he told me not too long ago, we were talking about tattoos and whatnot. And he said, dude, do yourself a favor and get all you can, because just like everything else, the older you get, it's just harder to come back from. And I'm not gonna lie, man, this is the first time I've been drilled on uh, in a few years. And wow, I am in some pain. <laughs> like, you know, and it's not, <laughs> I, I listen, i Took it and everything while I was getting it done. It was great. Had no problem. Getting a little raw towards the end, but that's okay. Dude, like, I have a cankle. My left leg, <laughs> for the first oh. time ever, I have, like, cankles. <laughs> it's, like, it's oh. like swollen up, you know, and uh, it just kind of just hurts. But, you know, all, all that aside, 
Uh, I could not be more pleased with the work. Um, you definitely have to check out pics of this later. It's it's phenomenal. Definitely the best work that's on me out of any tattoo. Um, yeah, there was know, uh, there was a there was one part where um, where uh, Chris gave you um, you know well you know whenever you do a tattoo uh, that long you have to take you know breaks every once in a while but there was towards the end when Chris gave you a break. And you kind of set up, and from where he'd been drilling so long on uh, on you, uh, Bub's eyes and his mouth were like bleeding, and there was blood coming out of it. And I was like, yep. "Oh gosh, that's so intense!" Right there. <laughs> Dude, it really was. I mean, and everything about it. I, I don't know. It, as it was coming along, there was a dude walking by at one point with a Halloween T-shirt on. And I'm kind of like in this weird position at the at that point where Chris is working on me, and this dude just he he kind of sees it, he catches his eye from like the corner, and and mm-hmm. this piece is nowhere near finished at this point. Dude goes, mm-hmm. "Holy crap, Bub!" You know, and it was it was just <laughs> awesome. awesome to have somebody recognize it like that, you know, and and it wasn't even nowhere near a completed piece. Um, you know, Bub's a very interesting character, uh, you know, in in this movie and. If you're not familiar, they're basically trying to see what they can do with zombies when they're in this state. Uh, mm-hmm. And and Bub is a, a seemingly a more docile zombie, you know. So they're giving him things like a razor and a book and a toothbrush and seeing what he does with them. And he does some really interesting things with them, like remembering what it was like to be human. But the, you know, the funny thing I, I think about it, you know, symbolically is that you know they're they're working on all this, trying to make him you know, more like a human, but in the end, um, you know, Mm -hmm. the scientist that was working with him is feeding him guts and brains and whatnot, whatever he's eating on, you know? So I just think it's really kind of interesting to look at, uh, from that perspective in that, you know, matter how something might seem, no matter how it begins to dress up or little things it might do or take on along the way at the end of the day, it's, it's still the same thing, no matter what, you know, wolf in sheep's clothing kind of idea. Um, and, they, right. and just going along with a lot of the symbolism that Romero throws around in his movies, I thought that that was very interesting. But, you know, incredibly iconic. Um, thrilled to have it on my body, you know, obviously forever. There's no there's no return policy on tattoos. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. But I was super stoked to come out of this convention with the experience that I had, you know, um, making some connections. Uh, speaking of Halloween t-shirt, actually, you know, PJ Souls was there. PJ Souls? Yeah, Everybody, man. It, Everybody, every uh, 13-year-old boy's life was made by PJ Souls when they first watched Halloween for the first time. So, um, yeah, man. Totally. <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> kind of cool to see her. Kind of embarrassing, I guess, but at the same yeah. time, you know. So, uh, but it was still cool, you know, PJ Souls. Um, yeah. It's, but, yeah. Do you, know what's we- uh, do you know what's weird about, about, the, uh, about PJ Souls is that her table was not in line with all the other tables over in the, uh, over in the like, uh, the celebrity gala she was all the way on the other side of the room which i which i kind of felt bad for rob and i saw her walking around um earlier oh man uh let's let's talk real quick about another celebrity that was there that was i guess a little bit i mean i guess maybe a higher tier maybe i guess if that's what you call it uh in the in the in the i guess convention circuit um jamie kennedy jamie kennedy was there and um, Jamie Kennedy was in Scream, so he wasn't, you know, in Scream and Scream 2, so it's not like he wasn't, you know, not supposed to be there. But, dude, he looked rough, didn't he? Yeah, I um, I saw him and didn't even think really anything about it. And then some. I heard somebody else say Jamie Kennedy, and it took me, honestly, dude, it took me just a moment. And I was like, oh, oh, Jamie Kennedy, look. Look at you now. Then, yeah. if you can't pick, if you can't picture him, if you're googling him right now, I'll save you the trouble. He's the guy that actually knows about horror movies in the Scream movie. Um, mm-hmm. He's the one that's kind of like, oh no, it plays out like this, and blah 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 blah. You know, so that's Jamie Kennedy. Yeah, and it looks like Hollywood uh, drugs have taken their toll. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, speaking of other Hollywood celebrities, there, Corey Feldman was there. Uh, Corey Feldman was there. Yeah, Corey Feldman was there. I didn't get a chance to spot him, but I think Zach did. And Zach took a picture of him giving someone a tattoo, which I don't know how safe that is or if he's a licensed tattooer because I don't know if, you know, 
that's all copacetic. But whatever, whatever man, man. You, you you were there just like I do. One thing I realized about conventions really quickly is that you have to be a special kind of weird to stand out at a full moon uh, horror movie tattoo convention. You have to if you're going to try to stand out there, like wow, you're going to have to bring your A game. So I would pretty sure I could see some people being there that would allow Corey Feldman to tattoo them, um, license or not, or ability yeah, right. or not. Who, you know. <laughs> Right, right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think who else was there. Uh, Derek Myers. Derek Myers was the actor who played uh, Jason in the new in the Friday Thirteenth remake. Derek Mears, also, yeah. Derek Mears, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Derek Mears, sorry. And uh, he um, also was uh, a, a predator in the new Predators movie. Uh, he was also the troll in uh, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters. Um, he's 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 pretty much like a big stunt work uh, kind of guy, right, John? And he is huge, huge. The guy was like what, like like at least seven five, right? Dude is Jack too. Yeah. Oh yeah, Jack. I mean, you know, he's not like you know like like the Hulk, but the dude doesn't miss a day in the gym at all. And you know, that was just it was just really cool, and um, you know, just a great time. Oh, one thing that uh, John and I uh, got to uh, do, which uh, you know, uh, this is a first for me, uh, we got to see an Avengers issue one. Oh my uh, gosh! Uh, <laughs> on sale there, it was like it was like finding the uh, holy grail of, uh, of 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 comics. But it's weird. Um, well, you know, of course, it, it's Avengers number one. Period. You know, so it's gonna be you know valuable comic. But the grade on this was like a what two six? It was just a flat two. Okay, like a straight up two. But tell him how much it was going for dude how much the guy wanted for it listen john uh, he's building <laughs> this up but it was only fifteen hundred dollars i'm pretty sure that if somebody $1. said to you listen i'm pretty sure that if somebody said john would you like to buy this da vinci piece for fifteen hundred dollars you would say <laughs> well yeah and to me it's the same thing I, i'll be honest with you i was already getting in trouble for being tattooed down there and i would thought man like I'll just go for broke and go ahead and get this book while I'm down here and be like, you know, ah, somehow this happened. I was crazy. Like yeah, these, uh, I, you know, I cannibalistic no nuns. Yeah, these cannibalistic nuns held me up with a shotgun and said that they were going to, you know, like cannibalize me unless I bought this amazing comic book. It's crazy. Here it is. Yeah, I mean, just saying. Uh, oh, also, really quick, just a quick update, John. Uh, our uh, Facebook page is now at 73 likes in a matter of half an hour. Wow, you guys are cool. Yeah. <laughs> How I cool hope you're is telling, that? Yeah, I hope you're telling lots of people about it so we can bore them to death with this podcast. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> people need to know where to find our Facebook. And if, and if you want to know, it's www.facebook.com slash thepowcastpodcast. Go over there and give it a like, folks. Check it out. All that jazz. So, the uh, podcast, the podcast podcast. Let's make this the, really, yeah, the really clear. Podcast podcast. Go and check yeah. it out. Yeah, um, and actually, you can find us on Twitter as well uh, at podcast podcast. And I feared it'd be a good time to go ahead and drop this. Um, we want to get you guys sharing the page. So mm-hmm. what we're going to do is you go ahead and start sharing the page, share the Twitter, share the Facebook, share the crap out of them. And whoever has the most shares, and we're going to look into this, after a week, we're going to take a look into your favorite combo character, uh, your favorite movie, uh, favorite character in a movie, whatever that may be. So there it is. Put it out there. Boom. Share the page. Share the crap out of the page. We'll review the results after a week. And whoever it is, we'll take a look at your character, and we'll talk about them, probably talk about ours as well. Right. Uh, something else John and I did while we were down in uh, Tennessee was we shot a couple episodes for an upcoming show. It's going to be coming up called First Appearances. And that was really awesome, dude, and, and able to sit down and shoot that show. I mean, um, I, I've sent John a, a preview copy of the episode, and I think you folks are in for a treat. I mean, like, the lighting looks good, the content looks good, the shots of the comics we got look good. Um, you know, uh, it'll be up here momentarily. Uh you know, within a little while, but make sure you keep your eyes glued to the Facebook and Twitter, and we'll let you know when those episodes start to air. We shot like what four of them, John? Yeah, we sh- we shot four this time. Um, 
you know, it is a really cool chance to look at some books, especially if you're into collecting or just getting into collecting, uh, you know, and you, you're trying to get a look at comic books you've never been around or something along those lines. Uh, you know, I've, I'm very fortunate that I do have, you know, a few cool things. Um, this is by no means a way of being like, nee, 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 look what I... No, it's, it's almost just like... Uh, show and tell for dorks so you know take a look at it you know there, there's going to be some cool stuff on there lots of art and try to give you little stories about the books themselves so i hope you hope you guys enjoy that yeah awesome man awesome um oh goodness so what's been going on in, in movie news well actually i know one thing that's going on in movie news uh we got the may 2nd spider-man 2 coming up man what do you think I'm ready to see this movie. That's actually where I wanted to to shift the rest of the show. I, you know, I really enjoyed the first Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, I thought it was great, and all the shots that I'm seeing about this. You know, <laughs> John will be the first to tell you that when they first announced the villains for this movie and first announced who was going to be playing them, you know, that was the first one to begin my little hate spell. You know, <laughs> oh God, hate the hate flowed so freely, and I think I was the only one of our friends who was trying to say positive. Like, John, like, you know, when John found out Jimmy Fox was playing Electro, he was like, dude, I don't know. And then I was like, dude, it's going to be cool. And then he made, he found an old picture of uh, Jimmy Fox playing Wanda from In Living <laughs> Color and, like, put the Electro mask on him. And I was like, why why you got to do that? Why? Yeah, I'm probably going to go ahead and put that picture back up uh, after this show. So yeah, you guys can get yeah. a look about it yourself. Dude, Paul yeah, Giamatti totally. is the rhino, and then and then Jamie Foxx is Electro. I, I I don't know. Immediately, just the dumbest images in the world came to my head. But, you know, with all that being said, everything mm-hmm. else I've seen so far looks like it's going to be phenomenal. I'm incredibly excited for this to come out. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm, I really think they're doing some cool things, you know, with Spider-Man's universe uh, in these mm-hmm. movies. Mark Webb is really trying to set something up. So I'm, I'm excited about it, man. I'm, I'm ready to watch this. I think I think it's hilarious how you know they found a director named Mark Webb to direct the uh, Spider-Man series. I right? Just think that's, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's complete fate. And also, do you know what other movie he directed before uh, before he did this? What was that? I think it's Five Hundred Days of Summer with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and um, Z- Zoe Deschanel. Huh. Random. Yeah, I know. That's why I said I, like when they when they announced it, I was like. Okay, well, who's going to be the director? And they're like, Mark Webb. I was like, okay, 500 Days of Summer. What is he going to do with this? And, hey, man, I think he's been doing great. I like I like the way uh, Electro looks uh, in the film. They're not really following to the comic per se, but they're making him more like a uh, elemental. And I like the way how he has, like, blue skin and he's, like, translucent. Like, he's, like, you know, pulsing of energy the entire time. I think that's awesome. Um, they have the Rhino doing his best uh, impersonation of Iron Man uh, in this rendition of his character, played by, um, oh God, what's his name? Paul Giamatti. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Paul Giamatti. Oof, God, had a blank. And uh, they're gonna have uh, the Green Goblin in there. I don't think I'm spoiling anything because they've been like running his. Uh, no, they they've really put know. out a lot of images of him recently. Yeah, exactly, dude. That Green Goblin looks legit, though. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I'm, no, I, I mean, I'm good with it. I I think that you know all the choices that Mark Webb's made. You know, going into this, uh, you know, once again, you know, you have comic book movies, then you have movies mm-hmm. about comic book characters, and then mm-hmm. you have, you know, comic book movies about comic book characters. There are differences, you know, really in the way they look at them. And Mark Webb is really trying to do something cool with these characters and not just make it a hokey comic book movie. You know, it's going to be a movie about comic book characters, but it's not going to be incredibly hokey either. So, yeah, it, look, it looks really great. I uh, want to hear from you guys. What are your opinions coming up on this movie? What do you what do you think about it? Are you going to go watch a premiere? You know, hit us up. We want to hit, hit, want you to hit us up at Palcast Podcast. We want to hear about it at our page. Share your thoughts. Share your thoughts on conventions. How do you feel about conventions? Have you been to one? Is there one you're dying to go to? Is there one you think we should check out? So hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Uh, let's get your opinions out there, and we'll try to do our best to keep up with them. Right. And um, let's see, uh, I remember when I went to go see the first Spider-Man, the, the, the Amazing Spider-Man movie, um, it was, I think, July 4th weekend. And, um, yeah, I think, I, think it was, I think it was July 4th. And I remember you and I were talking uh, right after it. 
And like, I think I called you immediately when uh, when the movie was finished. And there was a lot of people hating on that movie um, when it first came out. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And and, and like, I was sitting there and I'm like, what? And like, I, I think I. I posted up like, you know, I love the Amazing Spider-Man. I love the way they rebooted the character and how this all went down. And then I was going through and then like, you know, how Facebook like has like shared topics where you can see like, you know, if like there's, there's like a trending topic. Like if you say Spider-Man, if someone else m- mentions Spider-Man, that might show up in your news feed. I saw someone say, I'm not really a big fan of this new, this new Spider-Man. And then someone that you and I both know said, I don't know why everyone likes it. It's, it's fucking terrible. And I was like, what? But then again, you know, those are those are uh, purists. You know what I'm saying? Those are people who who can't take a chance and see their uh, character in, in a new light. You know, I thought uh, the Amazing Spider-Man was better than the first uh, Spider-Man movie, um, and that's just that's just me personally. Um, I think it followed closer with the character from the comics and the fact that he was more of a kid who knew science. And didn't focus on journalism like it did in the first uh, first trilogy of movies. Although they did show that he was smart, they showed more the newspaper boy aspect of him in the first trilogy. And this one, he's yeah. definitely you feel with him. You know, you feel him. You know, actually being a high school kid and being super smart, and you see those talents put to the test. And that's why I liked it more. I mean, you know, some people might hate on me for that, but whatever. Don't really care. Well, and here's the thing, man. You know, I mean, I, me personally, I actually like the Sam Raimi one better. Uh, I really do. I, I love them both. But the bottom line is, you know, unfortunately, in our world of interest, it's just easy to hate on things because it's just easier to. It's it's hard to go out and talk about how awesome something is all the time and genuinely enjoy right. it. It's easy to pick mm-hmm. everything apart. You know, and that's right. fine. And and the bottom line is, I, I hope we get some people picking us apart. You know, you know let us have it. Uh, I, right. I've wanted to bring it on. I'm, I'm totally cool with it, but it's just it just comes with the territory, and everybody learns to deal with it. Or you know, you, you just have to get over that pretty quickly. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know, because and and I guess a lot of people and there were some people who were like, "Why are they even redoing this?" I mean, this literally just came out like six, you know, seven years ago. Well, I mean, would you much rather live in a world where there's Spider-Man movies coming out? Period. Or a world where there's no Spider-Man movies coming out. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You know, and that's uh, what I tell people about, like, you know, the, the the Punisher movie, the Daredevil movie and all this. You know, when whenever they start just incredibly crapping all over everyone, I'm like, listen, I remember the days where the only th- thing I had to look forward to was, you know, the, the Batman movie and then mm-hmm. the incredibly low well actually i had a bigger budget but it was just didn't come out so well captain america movie that i rented monthly from the 7-eleven in my hometown you know so oh, yeah. hey listen bring on bring them on bring on all the comic book movies i'll watch them all i'll enjoy them all right exactly um i to say we're, we're gonna do one episode where we get into a lot of the older uh versions of these uh movies because it's it's funny i was watching a video somewhere and they were talking about how you know Marvel has already aired a lot of these heroes already, and you, and like looking back at some of these older ones, they want you to forget those movies ever came out, like the Captain America movie you were just not talking about, where he fought the Red Skull. Uh, that that movie was freaking awesome. I remember renting that myself uh, when I was a kid. I remember uh, the Incredible Hulk series when he was played by Lou Ferrigno, and they had Daredevil uh, in one. They had John Reese Davies playing the Kingpin. I think, and they had um, Thor in another movie series, you know, all that is history, you know, in order for us to move forward, we have to recognize that those things happen, you know, oh, yeah. even, you know, oh, yeah. even, even, um, even, you know, everyone's in love with the Incredible Hulk. Let's keep in mind, if it wasn't for Ang Lee's Hulk, um, you know, that character wouldn't have even gotten recognition. And I guess it's kind of a good thing that he did uh, do that movie for Universal because, it didn't do too well in the box office, and because it didn't do too well at the box office, Marvel was able to uh, get that property back. And then, yep. so instead of continuing that story, they went ahead and rebooted it to fall in line all with their new Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I think, you know, because we had that past experience, we were able to appreciate how much better it was, and you know, the whole universe they were creating. I mean, dude, Marvel's Marvel's on track here to do a lot of good things. Uh, speaking of Marvel, dude, uh, apparently, Agents of Shield is uh, getting awesome 
Yeah, you know, and I really wish I had more to offer that conversation right now because I have so many people telling me about how much better Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is getting every week and, you know, how you, you've got to go back and give it a chance. And I do have some episodes DVR'd, I do. But, mm-hmm. you know, I, I still have not uh, still have not gone back and watched them. But I, I have heard good things. And yeah. I promise to you guys, my listeners, that I will go back and see what all the hype's about, as it were. Uh- and uh, and something else, and John turned me on this, and I'm going to check it out now on Netflix. I'm going to start watching Arrow. Arrow. Watch Arrow. It's such <laughs> I have, a good I, show. Everyone is, and you know what? I It's not that I didn't have much interest in it. Um, it's, you know, I, I don't have cable uh, as of right now. And so the only way I can see stuff is like via Hulu or Netflix. Well, when the first season of Arrow came out on Netflix, I was like, okay, well, yeah, I guess it's pretty. I guess it's pretty cool. Then they dropped the trailer for this season, in which they introduced Deathstroke, and it was like a three-minute trailer, and it felt like a movie. And they introduced the Suicide Squad, I think, in that movie, and they introduced Huntress and everything. And the tone and the feel of the trailer made me be like, you know, I have to go check this out now, dude. I have to. And then when we were down, and uh, when I was down in Tennessee with you, even you were like, dude, go watch Arrow, go watch Arrow. So I think I'm gonna, I'm, when I get free time this week, I'm doing some other projects. But when I get free time this week, I'm gonna definitely pop it in. I've been watching uh, Young Justice on uh, on Netflix. You know, yeah, it's a cartoon, but dude, I love DC animation and DC animated anything. Um. They have great stories, and it's not just for kids. You know, characters die in those things, and their stories are really fantastic. Um, speaking of which, dude, did you hear about what happened at WonderCon? Uh, no. Um, at, at at WonderCon, um, which is a uh, which is uh, another uh, another convention in the vein of uh, the San Diego Comic Con. They had a panel in which they aired the new uh, Warner Brothers animated um, movie coming out called uh, Batman and Son, or, or, or the Son of the Batman. I, f- I forget the uh, correct name for it right now. But apparently they aired the movie, and the movie was fine, and then the people got up to ask questions, and apparently shit got aggressive. Like, it was the most hostile fan interaction that has been at a con in a long, long time. Was it just over the 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 story, the characters? It was, what? It was over the character of Damian Wayne. It was over the continuity with the comic books. It was, it was just. I mean, it would literally sound like it was just nitpicking uh, at the film. And there's footage of it online. Um, uh, go and search a, a WonderCon. Um, Batman controversy, and it's really awkward. I mean, there were like you know like questions. I mean, you know the, the fans had no problem telling these people on the panel how they felt about Damian Wayne and how they felt about this movie and how come uh, DC Animation isn't doing this or isn't doing that. And you could feel the tension in the video. I mean, I, I definitely uh, I definitely suggest looking that up. But it's just. It's just crazy, man. And and for everything good that DC Animation does, you know, of course they have a few stumbles here and there. There was a new um, series that was out on Cartoon Network called Beware of the Batman. Did you hear that? Yes. Well, on Beware of the Batman, it aired, I think, on Saturday mornings. And um, I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I had a few of my friends tell me that they enjoyed it. Um, apparently, it aired for 11 episodes and stopped. There was no, hmm. there was no um, wrap up. There was no uh, hint of a pause. They didn't run reruns. It literally just stopped after eleven episodes. Wow! And so, after so many months later, um, Io Nine reported that Beware the Batman is going to finish out its season because it had twenty six episodes, and they're going to air on the Cartoon Network. Only now they're going to air at three a.m. in the morning on oh, Saturday. That- that primary slot, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the, you know, and that kind of made me that kind of made me wonder. You know, um, Cartoon Network and um, and DC Animation. You know, they've uh, they've usually had a pretty cool you know relationship. They've had Teen Titans. They've aired a lot of the Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, um, Young Justice. A lot of stuff runs through there. And I think that something's gone sour. 
because literally DC controlled a lot of the programming block. And then now they've been cutting off all their programming. And I think they're trying to air more content that is Turner Broadcasting Cartoon, Cartoon Network based instead of relying on DC animated content. I mean, that's the mm. only way I can explain them freaking uh, doing that, dude. I mean, wh- why would you push a show that you've already paid for to a stop airing at eleven episodes and then say, okay, we're gonna re-air it, but it's gonna be at three a.m. on Saturdays. I mean, it just makes no sense to me. But uh, that's enough of that. <laughs> no, well, I guess when you have that kind of money, you can make decisions like that and just say to hell with it, and it really doesn't matter. Yeah, I guess. Well, uh, I guess we're gonna see here and try to wrap up. Uh, John, you got anything else for our listeners? No, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate everything. You know, we want to hear from you. That's the biggest thing, you know, in this community. And, you know, obviously a very opinionated community, but we want to hear from you. We want to hear what you want to hear. Um, we want to hear everything about your opinions, anything going on right now. Um, let us know. Send us a message. Send us a tweet right on our wall. Do all these other social media things. Um, write John a letter in blood. That would be cool, too. Um <laughs> But yeah, no, we want to hear from you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you again to Zach and Chris. Uh, for, and thanks to Rob for coming down with us. And thank you to my wife just for dealing with all my nonsense. Oh, dude. Uh, yeah, tell your wife I said thank you for making that badass spaghetti squash I'd never heard of until I came down there, dude. Yo, for real, before we get off here, spaghetti squash is the truth. If, just oh. spaghetti squash. That's, if, if you've forgotten everything else we've talked about, remember spaghetti squash. Sp- spaghetti squash, people, no matter what. All right, everyone, this has been another episode of Powcast. Y'all have an awesome day. Peace.